Hello everybody, Adam Lusek here, and today we're going to be talking about standardized evaluations for language models. When new models come from the major labs like Anthropic, OpenAI, or Meta, they tend to come with large charts that show all sorts of different numbers and percentages across all sorts of different categories here. You tend to see all sorts of different things like MMLU, GPQA, human eval, and then comparisons of the actual metrics of these between different models to better understand and compare the performance across a variety of tasks. And as someone who's actually been getting into the post-training and fine-tuning of language models myself, understanding how these evaluations actually are created, how they're ran, and how to interpret them is very crucial for being able to accurately show how well your model's performing post some sort of training. So over the last few weeks, I've released a couple fine-tuned versions of Llama 3.2 1B, the 1 billion parameter model from Meta. And while running all of the evaluations, I thought it would be decent to put together some sort of resource to show how you can run these evaluations yourself, what the different benchmarks mean, and how to interpret and kind of compare them on things like leaderboards. So the first question is, when we're looking at a chart like this, which is gpt 4 os release chart that shows all of these benchmarks, what do these actual benchmarks mean and how can we interpret them? Taking a look at this first one, MMLU, that actually corresponds to this paper here, Measuring Massive Multitask Language Understanding. MMLU has 57 different categories, some of which you can see here, like computer security, college physics, high school chemistry, all filled with different multiple choice questions. And the intent here is to essentially assess how accurate the language model that you're evaluating can actually answer these questions, and then be able to see across all of these different categories where it might excel and where it might be lacking. The questions are all set up with one question and then four multiple choice options, one of which of course being the correct answer. The actual accuracy of the language model's ability to correctly answer these questions are usually then grouped under the kind of main categories that MMLU has, such as humanities, social science, STEM, and other. And then the final reported number is usually the combined average accuracy across all of the categories, which then usually becomes the final reported score on these evaluation metrics here. So we can see that GPT-40 has an average accuracy of 88.7% correctness across all of the categories of MMLU. We can then accurately compare the performance to something like GPT-4 Turbo here, which has about an 86.5% accuracy. So 4.0 is slightly more accurate and better at this general understanding across multiple different categories for the MMLU dataset benchmark. So finally, what we can really say is looking at this MMLU evaluation, we can analyze a model's actual academic and professional understanding and then understand a little bit more specifically how well it's going to perform in comparison to a few other comparable models. Generally, people like to compare models that are similar parameter sizes or different kind of calibers. As we can see right here with four rows evaluations, it's looking at stuff like Claude 3 Opus, Gemini 1.5 Pro, Llama 3 400B, all of the massive state-of-the-art LLMs being compared here. An important distinction to make here is that sometimes when you look at general benchmarks like this one of the base Llama 3.21b, it'll say number of shots or n shot or few shot numbers. And for example, this one says five shot accuracy. What this means is that for each question, some number of additional questions and then also their answers are provided as context along with the answers. Generally, these follow the same subject or category that the question that you want the answer for is being asked on, and that's where the actual few shot evaluation comes in. So from the paper here for MMLU for five shot evaluation, what they do is they add five demonstration examples with answers and then ask the final question. So as we know, language models tend to perform decently, if not poorly sometimes at zero shot evaluation or just 
right off the bat answering a question, but usually after a few given examples or a few shot examples, tend to perform a little bit better or through going some sort of chain of thought reasoning. Other benchmarks tend to then follow a little bit of the same kind of setup as we just went over with MMLU. Some sort of specific or domain specific data set of questions aimed to kind of benchmark the language model's actual performance across some sort of subject, topic, or task. Something like Claude 3.5 sonnets here with GPQA, we can see that that's a graduate level Google proof Q&A benchmark and is essentially a benchmark made to understand how comparable a language model's performance is to actual graduate level understanding and thinking with a PhD curated data set. To list off a few more for some examples of popular benchmarks, we've got something like AGI eval, which is designed to assess foundation models in the context of human-centric standardized exams, such as college entrance exams, law school admissions tests, math competitions, and lawyer qualification tests. There's GSM 8K, or grade school math, eighth through kindergarten, which assesses a model's actual performance on multi-step mathematical reasoning with relatively basic math problems. There's Hellaswag, which is a bit of a funny name, but is actually testing common sense natural language inference. So they're going to provide some sort of first part of a sentence and then ask which one is the most common sense ending of the sentence to see if a model actually has relative accuracy for this trivial task for humans, but finishing the sentence for language models. And there are plenty more different specialized examples for things like yes or no questions, reasoning about physical common sense and natural language, measuring how models actually mimic human falsehood or the truthfulness in generating answers to questions, and all sorts of different evaluations that you can run to test how a language model has actually picked up and performed on these different areas. And so while a little bit more of these language or reasoning-based evaluations are good to actually show how well a language model can do its language modeling, there are also task-specific and multimodal data sets. Things like Software Engineer Bench measures how well a language model can actually resolve real world GitHub issues, which is all about coding. And then there's also other things like the Gorilla Berkeley Function Calling Leaderboard, which shows and measures how well a language model can actually perform different function calling tasks. And not just text as well, we're starting to see things like a massive multidisciplined multimodal understanding benchmark for actually testing image and image and text understanding across vision language models. And then there's also other stuff for things like audio understanding or video understanding. So as you can tell, there are a ton of different data sets, benchmarks, and different evaluations that you can run across all sorts of different language models, vision language models, or other different skills and tasks that you want to test, generally to compare a model's performance compared to another similar model. It's important to note that these evaluations are very different from some of the evaluations that are reported on in this video here, which is going over the actual language model's performance using something like Langsmith for evaluating performance in an application. And so while these evaluations are really good for assessing how well your application is actually performing, the evaluations and benchmarks that we're talking about here are more designed to show exactly how well your model is actually created and performing. So before going into showing how to actually find and run evaluations yourself, just a little bit about how you would actually use and compare these evaluations. So going back to my example of my Orpo Llama 3.21 B40K and the 15K models that I created, which is a Orpo fine-tuned version of Llama 3.21 B on the Orpo DPO Mix 40K data set, one of them on a shuffled subset of 50K entries and one of them on a full epoch of all 40, well, about 43,000 actual examples. I ran through all sorts of these different benchmarks covering AGI eval, Truthful QA, MMLU, Arc Challenge. And what we can do then is actually compare 
how well this fine tuning actually works on increasing its understanding across these general reasoning benchmarks in comparison to each other. Of course, the best way to compare language models is to run the same evaluations across both of them. So that is exactly what I did. Each one of these has a different note with the exact setup of how I'm actually measuring these things. So for AGI eval, let's take a look at that first. As we mentioned before, this is the one that has all of the different human-centric standardized exam questions and covers all sorts of different things here like the SAT, law school admissions tests, the GMAT and GRE, and other different kinds of subjects. So then jumping back to our table here, let's look at the normalized accuracy across these benchmarks coming from a zero shot average across all of the reasoning tasks in the AGI eval data set. The normalized accuracy here is actually accounting for the length output from the answers of the language model, which can slightly alter things because of the way that the actual calculations of the accuracy are ran. We'll get into how that actually is set up once we start running an evaluation ourselves, but what we can look at is that for my 15K model, I have an accuracy of about 21.01% normalized on AGI eval at a zero shot average. And then very nicely, we can see that my 40K model, which I was hypothesizing and hoping for an increase in accuracy actually has a 23.26% accuracy in the normalized accuracy metric. So we can see that we got a increase of about 2.25%, which is great. So really what these benchmarks and evaluations allow us to do is compare and contrast similar language models together to kind of understand what we should be expecting from the performance across these different tasks or across just different regular things like reasoning to better understand how the model is either improving or set up. In this case, I am directly running these benchmarks to compare my training methodology to see how well further training on this specialized data set actually allows us to increase its reasoning ability with something like the AGI eval benchmark. This is how you should really start to be interpreting and understanding these benchmarks yourselves. Not necessarily the actual end task performance. That's where something like Langsmith and running all of those evaluators will come into play. But in terms of direct model comparison across different things like general code, math, reasoning, or tool use, you can directly compare each individual similar model together to see a little bit about what to expect or the different improvements that the labs have been able to push. There are also many open source leaderboards like the Open LLM leaderboard or the YAL or yet another LLM leaderboard that run and compare models directly through the averages of a couple of these different benchmarks. So something like YAL is looking at the new benchmark suite, which covers the average between AGI eval, GPT for all, truthful QA, and big bench, which will all then be averaged together to show kind of the leaderboard here. And then stuff like Open LLM is looking at IF eval, BBH, which is big bench hard, math, GPQA, which we saw with Anthropic, MMLU Pro, which is a subset of more difficult MMLU questions to actually compare all of these. So that's a little bit about how these actual leaderboards are starting to get set up and how to compare differently on them. So really the final statement here about the comparison stuff is that each one of these individual benchmarks do tell you a little bit about one specific task or one specific thing that you're trying to measure of your model, but isn't necessarily going to fully show the whole picture across every single thing, especially not the end use of your model in whatever application you're using. So it's good to understand how to interpret these, how to compare them, to get a general understanding of how your model might perform, but it's best to start actually running specific evaluations yourself if you're interested in one kind of specific capability, which is exactly what we're going to do now. 
So one of the things that I wanted to test is looking at my Llama 3.21 B40K model, and then also looking at the base Llama 3.21 B model, I see that in their base pre-trained model statistics and benchmarks, they have the ARC challenge 25 shot accuracy metric. And so in my 40K model here, I also have arc challenge, but I did it at a zero shot evaluation between these two models. So now what I want to do is actually take my 40K model and compare it more directly to the base pre-trained model to see what sort of setup and if my fine tuning actually made a difference on this. So the ARC benchmark and the data set comes from this paper here and stands for the AI2 Reasoning Challenge. Essentially, it has two subsets, a ARC Challenge and an ARC Easy subset that consists of roughly around 8,000 different science questions. We can see from the distribution that this includes questions from about third through ninth grade level. Observing the actual raw data set that's been uploaded here to Hugging Face, if we look at the viewer and look at this first example problem, we can see that it tends to follow this format of having a question, which this says George wants to warm his hands quickly by rubbing them, which skin surface will produce the most heat, and then a few choices. The text here is dry palms, wet palms, palms covered with oil, or palms covered with lotion, along with a A, B, C, D label. And then we can see the answer key, which is the ground truth, which of course we'll be using to calculate our accuracy, is going to be A, which is dry palms. So now that we understand the actual benchmark that we're going to apply, what it is going to actually tell us about our model, and then of course the subset, the challenge subset that we want to run it on, what we have to do now is actually run the benchmark, which is where we will be introducing the LM evaluation harness from Eleuther AI. So what the LM evaluation harness repo is, is it's a framework for few shot evaluation of language models. Essentially, a lot of people have actually implemented the data sets and ways to actually run these evaluations into this repository, and it allows for a nice standardized way of running and comparing and doing all of these benchmarks. I'll have this linked in the description below, of course, and we're going to go into actually setting up and running with this, but I definitely implore you to take a closer look at some of the details that have gone into this repo, as it's a very powerful tool to be able to use and understand if you have the time to spend effectively getting up to speed with it. Within the repository, you can go to the LM eval tab here, and then furthermore into the tasks folder to see all of the different tasks that have been set up for you to be able to run. And these are all sorts of different benchmarks that have already been implemented nicely into the repository that you can just call with their scripts. So right at the top here, we can see that the AI2 reasoning challenge or arc folder is right here. And then for most, if not all of the evaluations, there's usually a little readme here that will explain a little bit about the benchmark, as well as links to any sort of additional resources or maybe the papers that are published along with them. You can also see down here more specifically the actual task names that you'll have to pass through with your configuration of what you actually want to test. So of course, we're interested in the ARC challenge. And as mentioned, we want to do that with 25 shots, which as a reminder, what this means is that 25 different examples of similar subjects or similar questions along with their answers are going to pre be provided plus the question being asked before actually getting the final answer from the language model. With all of that found and understood, now it's time to swap over to some code to actually get this up and running. So I'll be hopping over to my terminal here, which is backed by a cloud GPU. So if we actually pull that up, you can see that I've got an NVIDIA A100 with 40 gigabytes of VRAM running here on a server that I am connected to. You can use whatever preferred provider you would like or even your own home system, but generally you're going to need a little bit of power with something like a 
server ready GPU to run some of this stuff as we'll be doing evaluations that involve running the models themselves. But with that being said, the first thing that I'm going to do is just go ahead and set up a Python virtual environment like that, and then install a couple of libraries. So I'll have all of these different lines of actually setting this up and how I'm doing this here linked in a file in the description below as it tends to follow a couple steps to actually get these things nicely set up. But I'll be back once all of these dependencies install. Perfect. So we'll be using the accelerate library from Hugging Face to actually run these files. But first, we need to pass in a default config. You can, of course, configure this however you'd like, depending on how many GPUs or specifics you have. But the general default one is usually fine. We're then, of course, going to clone down the eval harness repo and install all of the dependencies there. So let's go ahead and run that, and we'll see the repo pop up here, and we'll start installing everything nicely from the requirements file. And finally, we'll use the hugging face command line interface package to log in and pass our hugging face token through so that we can access the actual models from the Hugging Face Hub. Now what we should be able to do is actually check and see if everything's working nicely by passing in dash H to just make sure that we can see our LM eval repo, which after passing in dash H, which is the just help argument, it shows us everything, all of our options and all of our different usages that we can have here. So from this, you can see all of the different arguments that you can pass in to actually run the evaluation with all of these different options. So what we need to do is then put together some sort of lines and pass in all of these arguments here to effectively set up our arc challenge 25 few shot evaluation run. So that's what we've got here. We're going to be using Accelerate to actually run the evaluation file so that it can be more effectively optimized for a GPU. But then a few of the arguments here, we are specifying that the model is going to be a hugging face model. Our model arguments are going to be a pre-trained model. And then we are going to have the hugging face directory to my Llama 3.2 1B 40K model. We're going to have trust remote code equal to true in case it runs into anything from loading the model that it doesn't want to run. And of course, the data type is going to be set to auto, which will generally be BF16 or so. It doesn't actually tell us what the based pre-trained model is running in with the data type, but we can see that their instruction tune models are running in brain float 16 precision. And if I go to my model here, you can actually see that I'm just running this in floating point 16 precision. The actual precision of your model is also going to be another variable to consider when trying to most effectively compare together the actual benchmarks. But sometimes we don't have the perfect information that these labs are actually outputting here. So we'll do our best. Floating point 16 precision should be fine. We're then going to pass in our tasks here, which I want to do arc challenge. This, of course, will come from the arc file here, where we can specify specifically that we want to do the arc challenge task. And then a few more of these things. We've got number of few shots set to 25. And then I'm just setting the device to explicitly be CUDA 0, which is the only GPU that we have running here and set an automatic batch size. So it'll assess our GPU's performance and capabilities and then do all of these evaluations as a batch, depending on how much our GPU can actually take. We're then going to specify an output path so that all of the nice little statistics and information from our evaluation in a JSON file can be output. And I'm just going to put that to arcc underscore 25. So now that we have all of that set up, we'll go ahead and hit enter. 
And what it will start to do is parse all of these out, download the actual model, this uh, Llama 3.21B model, and make sure that everything's set up nicely. So I'll cut a little bit of the boring parts here, but you can see it start to download the actual model here, which is going to take a couple minutes. And I'll tell you all when anything interesting happens. Sweet. So with that just finishing up, what it's going to do is then build all of the arc challenge questions and context. Essentially doing all of the prompt creation that's going to then be passed through the language model. And one of the interesting nuances here is that for especially something like this, which is a multiple choice based data set, which a lot of, if you noticed, the actual benchmarks are set up similarly to, is that we're not actually going to be running any sort of generation or text generation through the language model when doing this assessment. Instead, we are going to be running these log likelihood requests, which what this means is that essentially we're going to pass in the full prompt and the full answer with each of the individual answers through the language model. In this case, we will be doing that in batches as this is currently being set up. And what this is actually going to be doing is instead of generating and then somehow extracting out the answer and then comparing it to the ground truth, we're going to be looking at the actual probabilities that the language model itself applies to generating each of the answer choices. This is super efficient because we don't actually have to run any sort of generation. We can just pass in our entire prompt plus the answer, see whether or not the language model is confident about predicting that expected answer, and then choose the one with the highest likelihood of being predicted as the actual answer that the language model would say. And then based on that, we can determine our accuracies by comparing what the predicted answer is to the actual ground truth or the true answer and find the actual accuracy there. So with this just about finishing up, we can see that for a 25 shot arc challenge, we got a normalized accuracy of about 38.48%. So let's go ahead and compare that to the models. In the base trained Llama 3.21B foundation model here, we can see that they have a 32.8% accuracy at 25 shots. So we can already see that we have a nice almost 6-ish percent increase. Well, not 6% increase, but 6 percentage point increase here. So already know that our accuracy and training has done something to improve that. And then if we actually take a look back, we can compare this 25 shot average to our zero shot average, which squeezes out about another percentage here from our normalized scores of the 40K model and about 2% from the 15K here. Looking at the JSON file output, we can see some more of the metadata and specifics, all of the different accuracies, normalized accuracies, and standard errors that we have here, as well as how the actual data set is being pulled from the hub, and then how it's splitting up everything and setting up all of the nice actual prompts that are being ran through the language model to detect these log likelihood probabilities. And you can look at all of this nice stuff in here to see all of that. One of the things to bring up here is that there are multiple ways that people actually implement different ways of scoring across the different evaluations. For something like this on the IF eval metric here, you can see that in its respective JSON file, which I ran a bunch of different metrics on my 40k model here, you can see that it also passes in a process results function, which if we ask our good friend ChatGPT to just print out nicely, you can see that it is a custom function for actually taking in the input and returning out the different accuracies or actually the actual computations here. And there are a few other ways that these are actually calculated too. For something like GSM 8K, they actually do regular expression based matching to run a literal generation from the language model out and then extract the answer to compare through some regex filtering. So 
check out and look into all of the different ways that these evaluations are set up. This tends to be in each one of these individual task files here. So for GSM 8K, they have a YAML file that you can actually see all of the different setups and implementations of how the accuracy metrics are put together. But it's crucial to understand a little bit about how these things are set up so that you can more effectively interpret how your actual benchmarks are doing. But with our successful benchmark of the ARC challenge on 25 few shot examples, you can see a bit of an example of actually using the LM evaluation harness to both set up and run the standardized benchmarks to more effectively assess the performance of your language models and compare and contrast language models against each other. So the next time you see a confusing looking chart like this that compares multiple models performance across all of these different metrics together, you know exactly where to look, where to verify and validate, and how to interpret all of these results. That being said, I will have further resources as well as all of the different codes and scripts that I used in the description below. If you enjoyed the video and liked the video, leave a like on the video. If you want to see more and support the channel, consider subscribing. Thank you and have a great day.